Everything changes in your smile, and everything changes in your eyes, and the things I brought with me, and the things that are running through my mind, oh, it changes now. I need words deeper than the oceans, and I need a voice that's bigger than the skies, and I need a song. I thought 
I've been trying awful hard to make you proud of me. But it seems the harder that I try, oh, the harder it becomes. And I feel like giving up. Chasing their approval and it's killing me. And I know the more I try to prove, oh, the less I have to show. And I'm stuck inside my Your faithful. 
time has turned it up We're gonna sing it out For all the world to hear Oh, oh, oh There's life for everyone A new day has begun Something to shout about Let it be known That our God saves Our God reigns We lift you up, up Let it be known That love has come Love has won We lift you up, up, up Whoa Nothing can stop us now No one can keep us down We found our voice again Oh, oh, oh No need for fear and shame There's power in his name Come on, let freedom reign Let it be known That our God saves Our God reigns We lift you up, up Let it be known That love has come Love has won We lift you up, up, up We lift your name up higher and higher. We lift your name up. We shout your name out louder and louder. We shout it out now. We lift your name up higher and higher. We lift your name up. We shout your name out louder and louder. We shout it out now Let it be known That our God saves Our God reigns We lift you up, up Let it be known That love has come Love has won We lift you up Let's sing it again Be known That our God saves Our God reigns We lift you up, up Let it be known That love has come Love as one We lift you up, up, up Whoa hey Amen, let's give him a praise this morning Hallelujah Thank you, Lord Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your love has come And Lord, that your love has won, Lord That we have victory for you In Jesus' name Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, as we come this day, Lord, that you'll be amongst us, that your spirit will move and flow, that your anointing will come, and, Lord, that our lives will be transformed through the renewing of our mind this day, Lord. Lord, to have your way in our hearts and our lives, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. Isn't it great to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. was nowhere you came to my rescue from the grave I've been raised when I needed a savior to save me Jesus you made I was blind but these eyes have been opened now I walk in the light every step on this road I will follow You are the way, you are the way, lost and dead, but your love came to find me, Jesus, you are the way. All my days, all my days are secure in your promise. Never standing alone You are the truth, you are the life, you are my future Jesus, you made me I'm alive in the love that you give Free to dance once again You will lead me from glory to glory Jesus, you made me 
and praising the Lord. That's great to see. We're, not, we're going to get back to that very shortly. Just a couple of quick announcements this morning. We have Rick, Nick, Nick, Rick, Nick Risky. You can understand the Rick and the Nick now. So Nick Risky is coming on the 30th of January. Very exciting. He's very um, uh, accomplished at what he does. So he's coming to talk to us about uh, discipleship. He was here this time last year and he's going to build on what was uh, done here last year. So if you want to get, be a part of that uh, on the Saturday, there's uh, steps one and two of the discipleship course. Um, you register with Dave and then on the Sunday, Dave over here in the corner, and on the Sunday, of course, there is the third part of that. So, you know, you have to do part one and two. Otherwise, you'll come halfway through and you won't fully understand it. So make sure you register with Dave for the Saturday um, come along to that and make, make the most of having this ministry here with us. And now I'm going to hand over to uh, Scott, not Scott, and, <laughs> and he's going to tell us more about what's going on what's in the church. Scott, what's that Scott to do with you anyway? <laughs> um, now we're going to do the four keys. Now the four keys is hearing God's voice, talking with it uh, about Joella and getting, you know, getting excited and uh, getting ready to do it. Uh, we're talking, oh, oh, I was thinking about it. Jesus, I don't know, sometimes we forget. We know that he's God, of course. But when he was walking the earth, he operated just as a man. He didn't call on his godliness. He operated as a man. So how on earth did he know uh, Zacchaeus' name? How on earth did he know to go through Samaria? Because they never went through Samaria. Because the woman at the well was going to be there. How on earth did he know these things? Well, he heard God's voice. And we too can hear God's voice. That's a challenge. That's, uh, that's a challenge for you. Do you want to honestly live your life in the same way that Jesus lived his life? The best place to start is to hear God's voice and be obedient to it. Uh, there's a guarantee, money back guarantee. If you do this course, <laughs> you will hear God's voice. That's fabulous. Thank you, Scott. That's fantastic. We also have an announcement this morning from Daryl, who's going to tell us about what's happening with youth, with his moustache. Hey. <laughs> needs to... See what happens when you get into isolation for a couple of weeks. On the 13th of March, we're heading off to Victor Harbour. We're going to do, this is for the youth, we're going to do some abseiling, we're going to do some surfing, and we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be $100 for the day. Uh, and that's going to cover everything. It's going to cover the bus trip. It's going to cover your, after, uh, your evening meal and all activities and that through the day. Um, if, so if you're aged between 13 and 17, please come. It's going to be the best day of your life. And one other thing, youth itself actually starts back on February the 12th. So anyone who's a bit bored with school holidays and that, the inn's in sight and youth is coming back. That's fantastic. So 
if you want to know what's going on in the church and what's happening, that you can update your uh, card to tell us what your latest phone number and emails are and we can get all this stuff text to you or check the Facebook site or all the other social media sites, just Riverland Central Christian Church. That's all from me. Over to Joella. Excellent. Thank you so much, Michelle. Welcome, everybody. It is so good to see you all here in this room, in the next rooms and out in live stream land. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Why don't you jump to your feet again? We are going to worship God. We're going to praise him. You know, let's let's just uh, tune in to God and what he's doing. You know, Scott was uh, challenging us to, to hear the voice of God today. And you might be going, oh, I've never heard God speak. Well, you need to sign up for that course. But if you have heard God speak, or even if you haven't, listen today. As we begin to um, as we begin to sing, you might you, you don't have to sing all the words. It's fine. You can just stand there and, and uh, listen to and have the music flowing around you, and you might be able to hear God speak to you. And so, uh, so he, as as we do that, if you hear God speaking and you know that that message is not just for you, but it's for the rest of us as well then please come, if uh, you're part of the church here, come and uh, come and have a chat with me and we can make space, we can figure out how to share that with everybody so that we can all benefit from that. Better hand you back to Carl now. Thanks so much for leading us, Carl, Barney, Heath. It's great to have you up here today and we're just so grateful to you all. Thank you. Um, that's really cool. So thank you and let's just focus our eyes now on the Lord and uh, begin to worship Him some more. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up till I lay my head, I will see the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I can be. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Let's sing it again. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Happy, 
if you're happy, so, so go. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of your glory. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing. I will worship you, my Savior. I will sing of your glory. I will sing of your mercy. I will sing of your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that your love truly is faithful. That your love truly is good. That no matter what we have happening in our lives, Lord, you're always there. That your faithfulness will always see us through. No matter what circumstances we face, You're always there beside us, strengthening us, guiding us for your spirit. i 
that all things are possible in you. Father, Father, forgive us when we doubt that. Forgive us on those times where we kind of begin to wonder. But right now as we stand here in your presence, pour out your spirit afresh upon us. 
to bring that hope and that, that, that sense of expectation back for those who've lost it. Lord, that sense of just certainty that, that my God can handle this. My God can and is willing to handle this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I believe that God is wanting to heal some people this morning, but uh, but we need to but we need to first accept that God maybe can and that God maybe will and that God actually does want to and that God will heal this morning. So if you have a problem with your left shoulder in particular, I believe that God wants to heal you this morning. Is there anybody who's having troubles with their left shoulder? Uh, just uh, give me a wave if you're in this room. Give me a shout out if you're in the next. If you're in the live stream, I see that you're waving at me. If that's you, I'm just imagining it in your lounge room there or wherever you are. But somebody with a problem with their left shoulder. But if there's other things as well, if there are areas in your life where you need healing for your, your body, if there's somebody in your life who's dear to you who is, is unwell at the moment, let's just pray for those people now. Let's uh, thank God for his healing power that is available to us. You know, uh, I know that uh, often in, in, um, in churches we believe that God can heal the trouble we have sometimes is whether we whether we believe that he will heal. And uh, my name means, Joella, my name means God is willing. And so I'm here to de declare to you this morning that God is willing. God is willing. So let's simply reach into his throne room. Let's go there in the spirit this morning. We are there in the spirit this morning. So let's just receive those things that he's got for us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you, God, that you are here by your spirit with us. And Lord, we thank you that you are not only able but willing to heal. And so we just simply reach into uh, the, 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 the spiritual realm this morning and receive those healings. So, Father, for those left shoulders that are in pain this morning or there's a problem there, we, we declare healing. We just release that healing now in the name of Jesus. Where there is healing in, in other parts of bodies, in hips, in knees, in, in intestines, in hearts, in, in lungs, Lord, we reach into your, your supply this morning and uh, receive what you've got for us this morning, those healings in those areas. And we speak to the pain and say, be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. We receive instead the healing like honey, like balm, like, like medicine running over us by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bring your healing power to those who are here, to those who are listening, to those who are loved by those who are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. You may take your seats. Uh, can you just, uh, if you experience some kind of um, sense that God was healing you in your body right in that moment, you might need to just quickly give it a bit of a, a test or a wiggle or something to, to know. But if, if somebody believes that they received a healing right in this moment already, can you just give me a wave? Is there anybody who can do that this morning? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, that's all right. We'll keep praying. We'll keep waiting, won't we? God is good all the time. This morning, this morning, this morning, we have Louise is going to come and she's going to uh, share with us some of what's going on around the world. You know, we, um, you might think, oh, we're just, just a little country church. We're not just a little country church. We're a little country church that reaches far beyond ourselves into various parts of the world. We, we uh, are an incredibly you are an incredibly generous people and we, we give and the, the, the money that is given goes into all kinds of countries around the world and this morning Louise is going to update us on some of that. Thanks Louise. Hi. I would like to thank you for your generosity in giving to missions. Wow, we changed lives, not just here but all around the world. We may not see the end result but we are a part of it. Today I would like to talk about Destiny Rescue. This is a, a mission very close to my heart. And they have rescued 
5,798 lives. These have been changed from being sexually exploited to being free. They just don't free them. They care for them after. So wherever they're vulnerable, that is taken care of. They have updated their vision for this year and I would like to go through it with you. Their vision for this year, 2021, is to grow. We can see many exciting opportunities to develop and expand. So we have set plans and processes in place to increase in rescues towards a future where no child is sold for sex ever. Regions. Extending our effort into high-risk areas for trafficking children. Strategies. Developing our surveillance and rescue techniques in Pacific area areas such as online. Care. Helping survivors stay free from extra support where they are vulnerable. Partnerships. We are only as strong as our partnerships with other organisations and one of them is us. Law enfor enforcement agencies, governments and support. Awareness. Educating high-risk populations about the realities of human trafficking to increase their protection. Advocates, ones who plead for others. Multiplying advocates who are willing to do something to contribute or to end child trafficking. We know what it takes to put in the hard yards. Growth requires learning, stretching, changing and so, so much grace. And yet every child is worth it. So let's keep praying for these rescuers that put their life on the line every day of every year. Not everyone can go and rescue children and change their lives. But through your giving to missions and prayers, you are a part of changing people's lives and these children. And I would like to thank you for that. Thanks, Louise. That's really great, isn't it? Isn't it an amazing thing? You know, I, um, I get to be the one who receives the phone calls from the people at Destiny Rescue when they ring to say thank you. When, uh, when another um, deposit hits their bank account and they ring and say, oh, thank you so much. It's making a world of difference. Do you know, because of your generosity, um, this year we are giving $800 every month to Destiny Rescue. You know, sometimes you see in the paper where a, a charity's ra raised, you know, $1,000 and they give it to something and there's a big check and there's a big hoo-ha made and, and we don't make a big hoo-ha every month. But, um, but this is what you're doing and what it means is that there are children who are, are being rescued and, and saved and set free. And so we just want to thank you so much for bringing that to our attention again, Louise. That's, that's really good. Let's pray for Destiny Rescue now. Father, uh, we are just so grateful that there are people um, who are your people, who are brothers and sisters with us, who we don't necessarily know their names, but who have heard the call to go and do this um, brave, heroic, very action-focused ministry of of going in and finding people and seeing them working with police to see them um, rescued and set free father we we pray that you would keep uh, the rescuers safe that you would cause their work to be effective that you would continue to um, bring resources from from churches like us um, all around the australia all around the world to to make this possible and father we pray for those children those who will be rescued this week those that will be rescued this month 
God, for those who, who don't have never, you know, there's been no contact made yet, but who need to be rescued. And we ask, God, that you would expand the work of Destiny Rescue and other organisations like them, Father, that there would be a, a day when there are no, there's no need for them anymore because the work has been done, because culture has been changed, because revival has come in those places where that happens, where, where poverty is dealt with, where all the underlying issues are, are gone and your name is exalted and children are not treated like that anymore. So, Father, we ask your grace, your blessing, your power be just so abundantly available for Destiny Rescue. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to continue our series, which is Best Year Ever. And Dave's going to bring us this, uh, this one. So, Dave, come on up. Why don't you welcome him as he comes? Well, good morning, everybody. Before we get into that, can I just add to that about Destiny Rescue? I know I say this so much, but I think it's so important that we remember this. The reason uh, the sex trade, the reason the child sex trade flourishes so much in Southeast Asia is because largely of the clientele of Western men. Okay? It's, it's, it's largely because of men from places like Australia that those, those places have to do those kind of things. And as an Australian man, I have a problem with that. As an Australian man, I want to be different to that, and I want us as a church to be different to that, which is why we, partly why I'm so committed and so passionate to us giving so much money to organisations like Destiny Rescue. So I want to say to the men in this room, be different. To the men in this room, be different to our culture. You know, when you hear about, and we, we do hear about this in workplaces, guys going off on solo holidays to Southeast Asia, we know why they're going, but be got bold and courageous enough to say that is not the call of God on men's lives. You know, men, we are here to be protectors. We are here to be providers. We're not here to be takers and, and we're not here to be abusers. So I really encourage every Christian man, every man who says you represent Jesus, be different to that and don't be afraid to stand up and say, I am different to that, and we as a nation need to be different. So let's do that together in Jesus' name, eh? Okay? Okay. We're going to get into the word, your best year ever. Um, we've had two sessions on this so far. Have you enjoyed this? Yeah. This has been great. I mean, this has been the way we orient ourselves well for the year. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been looking at how we can have our best year ever, even with the possibility that 2021 could be very similar to 2020. There's no guarantees that COVID's going to go away this year. There's, there's no guarantees that life is going to be any cruisier this year than it was last year. But we can be like trees planted by the river with our roots deep in God. So, so what we've been doing is looking at our attitudes, looking at our mindsets, looking at ways to position ourselves so that we can grab hold of everything that God's got for us we can catch all of his blessing. We can catch all of his purpose for us for this year and have a, a wonderful, productive, fruitful year in God. So as we get into this this morning, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that for those of us who say we follow you, we're not called just to cling on like frightened little monkeys until Jesus comes back. We're to be fruitful. Where to be productive, where to flourish in your grace and in your goodness. And so, Lord, as we open your word today, and thank you so much for your word, God, that, that tells us so clearly who you are, what you like, how where to be. As we open your word today, God, and as we interact with your word, we ask that your word would change us. We ask that your word would transform us from the inside out. We, we grab hold of, we, we just offer, Lord, any uh, mindsets that we have. We, we, we offer any wrong thinking. We offer any behaviors up before you, God, that are, that are not consistent with the kind of people you're shaping us into. And we actually ask, God, that you, you, you work with us today to change ourselves from the inside out. We yield to you, God, and ask that you would do the change in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to give you a warning as we start. I am about to tell you the rudest word in Australia. 
Australia. The most offensive word in Australia. I'm going to drop it in here. Okay? And I, I know that, that Australians are masters of offensive words. I mean, we've all met, we've all met the guy at work who uses the F-bomb as a comma. We, we've met that guy. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I sometimes hear about, you know, speakers who say, you know, when they heard I was a pastor, suddenly all of the swearing stopped. I've never had that experience. My, my experience has been usually when people hear that I'm a pastor, it increases. I, I don't know why, but that's what happens. I, I mustn't be holy enough. But, it, but the truth is that men aged between 40 and 54 are the biggest potty mouths in this, this country, the research shows. And do you know when they drop the most choice expletives? Behind the wheel. It's true. It's true. So I, I'm right in the box seat for, for those who use the most offensive words in Australia. Uh, men tend to swear more than women, and they swear most at sport and at work. Um, now, I, I do want to tell you, I'm not the kind of preacher who tries to be cool and tries to be relevant, so I'm not about to drop F-bombs from the pulpit. I'll be very clear about that. I've heard about guys do that, and I think, oh, wow, I'm, I'm not that sort of person. But here we go. I'm going to drop the most offensive word in Australian culture today as we open the Bible to John 14. So if you have your Bible with you, you can open to John 14. And you might want to grab some earplugs or have your fingers ready to put in your ears if, if you don't want your ears to be sullied by the most offensive word that we can possibly hear. Say, sullied. You've got to say it like that. I don't want my ears to be sullied. All right, so we're going to read from John 14. We're going to read from verse 23. Jesus actually uses the most offensive word in Australia. So this is Jesus speaking. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and they'll come to him, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. I want to tell you this morning, the dirtiest word in Australia today is the word obedience. Obedience. If you ever want to use a word that causes people to internally kick up, to internally squirm inside, it's the word obedience. I mean, think about it. You go to the supermarket, you're going up and down the aisles, and you see a parent I'll say a mother, I'm not particularly picking on mums here, but you see a parent say to the child, you need to do what I tell you because I say so. We've all heard that, haven't we? Who said that? Some of us have said that. Now, I don't know about you, but when I walk past a parent who's saying that to a kid who's usually losing it, inside part of me goes, oh, they're losing it with their kid. They're losing control. You know, they're resorting to obedience. You have to do it because I'm, I'm telling you you have to do it. The parents starting to lose their stuff. We've omitted this word from our wedding vows often in, a, in, in modern culture. You know, and, and sometimes for very good reasons. But it's a word that has fallen out of fashion and a word out of favor. Very rarely do we hear people say, I love, honor, and obey you. Very rarely do we hear that. And, and what about when the government tells us to social distance or to use QR codes to check in places? for contact tracing. I'm not going to do that. You can't make me. I'm not doing that. No, no, it's all a conspiracy. It's all a sham. I'm not doing it. We hate the idea of obeying. Obedience is the last great swear word in Australia. It's actually offensive to tell somebody that, that sh they should obey somebody else. I just want you to think now about all of the problems in your world. Maybe global warming sits high and large in your head. Poverty, domestic violence, maybe it's obesity. Maybe you, know, you struggle with, with getting the weight off at a personal level. What about laziness, addictions, relationship breakdowns, abuse? I mean, whatever the problems are that you are, you are trying to deal with in, on a day-to-day -day basis in your world, do you know the root cause of these problems? 
They've actually got the same root cause no matter what they are. And the same root cause, disobedience. It's you and me playing God. It's you and me being disobedient to God. Because when, when I make choices and act like I'm God, instead of doing what God tells me to do, I have problems in my life. I know this. You know this. I mean, our oldest temptation, the, the oldest trick in the book is the temptation to play God. It happened way back in the Garden of Eden when the serpent tempted Adam and Eve and they, they ate the fruit. And we, we've seen it happening all through the Bible. We, we play God. We are disobedient to him. I play God when I say, look, I, I know God wants me to do this, but I'm going to do that anyway. I'm playing God. When, when I know that God says no to sex outside of marriage, but I decide to do it anyway, I'm playing God. When I know that God says I, I need to live simply and, and humbly, but I, but I choose to do this or buy this anyway, I'm playing God. Every time God tells you to do something and you don't do it, guess what? You're being disobedient. That's the reality. And the New Age movement is built around this whole idea. The New Age movement fundamentally says, well, you're a God, I'm a God, we're all gods, we're all divine, you can be God, you can, you can choose your destiny. Let me give you a wake-up call. You're not God. You're not. If, if you were God, you'd solve all your problems. I don't know about you, but I've got heaps of problems. I haven't solved them despite my best, options, my best efforts. You're not God and you'll never be God. But the good news is that there's a cure for this. And the cure is believe Jesus and obey God. Believe Jesus and obey God. You know, this morning I, I want to give you three reasons why we should obey God. And the first one that I'm going to share with you is this. The first reason is that, well, actually, we should obey God because, well, he's God. I'll say that again. We, we should obey God because he's God. When I was putting these three reasons together, let's have the next slide up, please. Um, when I was putting these three reasons together, when I was thinking through all the issues and I was thinking through the factors and I was thinking, oh, there's, there's got to be some real benefits to obeying God. There's, there's got to be some really good things that come our way to obey God, you know, to, the reasons to obey God. I've got to tell people, you know, there's all these good things that will happen if you obey God. But actually, if we obey God, life's going to be tough in many ways. You know, when you obey God, life is harder because you're constantly swimming against the tide of personal opinion. When you obey God, life actually starts to cost a whole lot more. When, when you start to obey God, you'll probably be poorer. You'll probably have less career opportunities. You, you'll probably um, have less hobbies and you'll, you'll definitely have less free time to yourself. Because you have to put people first. All the time. You have to die to yourself. All the time. So the number one reason to obey God is actually not about any benefits at all. It's, it's actually because, well, he's God. I mean, have a look at the very first, the very first um, passage in the Bible, the very first verse in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So everything we know about creation, right back to the very dawn of time, starts with God. There's nothing before God. There, there was nothing before God. We, we, we don't get to see any more than that. You know, Everything starts with God. And, and all throughout the Bible, we read God declaring his sovereignty. He, he says, you know, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. 
Do these things, do these things, do these things. I am the Lord. There's no one greater than me. So the whole Bible is all about that. And then right at the end, on the, the tail end of that, we see Jesus, who, by the way, is God. He says that just as things started with God, they're actually going to finish with him as well. I mean, look at what it says in Matthew 25 there. Heaven and earth will disappear. Who's sitting on the earth right now? Some of you who are hovering three inches above the earth. Nobody. We, we're all on the earth, right? It's weird to think that everything around us is going to disappear one day. You know, every tree is going to go. Every rock is going to go. Every mountain is going to disappear. The largest sea that you can possibly imagine is going to disappear. Everything is going to go. But Jesus says, my words will never disappear. At the end, when everything else is burned up, God remains. God remains. Do you know, I, I often say, you know, you know, God is bigger than we can imagine. The reason I say that is because there, there was one time in particular in my life when, when I was completely overwhelmed by the size of God. Have you ever been overwhelmed by the sheer size of something ever? And, I, and I'm not talking about when you've turned up at the pub and the schnitzel's hanging off the sides of the plate. That's, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? A big schnitzel's exciting, sure. But have you ever seen like a really big statue? Or, or a big monument where you've come up to it and gone, flip, that's big. Have you ever, you know, seen a mountain or, or been on a mountain and seen the view and realized you can just see for miles and miles? I, I remember I was hiking up in the northern Flinders Ranges years ago before we had kids. And it was November. We were hiking. It was really hot. Um, we were having to drink litres and litres of water a day just to keep hydrated. And we didn't have tents. We were sleeping in these, these army-issued plastic um, kind of ground sheet type things called hoochies. They've got, um, they've got uh, eyelets and things in them, so you can string them up like a, like a lean-to and you can sleep under those. Um, but because it was November, there was absolutely no chance of rain. Uh, it was just super hot. That's what I remember. And so we, we really quickly, after a few nights, started folding our hoochies in half and sort of making these swags and, and sleeping out under the stars. And I, I've still got this memory of this particular night when I was sleeping out under the stars. And there's no light pollution whatsoever in the Flinders Ranges. Okay? There's just not a light anywhere. And there was not a cloud in the sky I was lying down and I remember being able to see every single star in the sky. I could see the stars that were close. I could see the stars that were far away. I could see satellites kind of closest moving across my vision. I could see the Southern Cross. I could see the Milky Way. I could see the whole show. And I just remember lying there. I reckon for a good couple of hours before I went to sleep thinking, oh my God, I am small. You know, because you could just see this depth going on and on and on as far. And I, I just remember thinking, I am just like this speck of dust on the side of a speck of dust. Massive what? Massive universe. And then I suddenly realized that God is even bigger than that. God is even bigger than that. So we have this, this God who is bigger than we can possibly imagine, more powerful than we can possibly imagine, created the heavens and the earth, will be there when the heavens and the earth are gone. Do you know, if, if he's not worth obeying, who is? And if we're going to follow him, why, how on earth could we do it half-heartedly? How on earth could we do it one foot in and one foot out? How on earth can we play with God and just dabble around with God? 
when he's the creator of the heavens and the earth? If he says obey, let's obey because of his sovereignty. So that's the first reason to obey God. Here's the second reason to obey God. Obedience does bring blessing. Okay? Obedience brings blessing. Jesus' most probably most famous teachings are in Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount. They're called the Beatitudes. And it's interesting, when you read the Beatitudes, Jesus presents these eight teachings and he, he pretty much prefaces them all the same way. He says, you know, blessed are these people, blessed are those people, blessed are those people. And he, he describes the kind of people that they are. And really what he's saying is, if you do these things, then God will bless you. If you are this way, then God will bless you. Let's be really clear here about what blessing is. Now, the word bless, literally, it's, it's, it's a Greek word, and the word that is used is the word makarismos. Okay? Now, this is a poetic word. It's a word like thou or thus or privy or one of those kind of words. But you shorten the word down, and it's the verb makar, which is a Greek word. And do you know what it means? Happy. That's it. Happy. So to be blessed means to be happy. Oh, thank you very much, professors. We're all, we're all professors of theology now. So, so Jesus is starting off saying, I want to tell you these eight ways to be happy. But, and this is the but, you're not going to be happy in the way the world thinks that you should be to be happy. Okay? So we'll read the first three here, and this picks up on this theme of obedience. So Jesus says in Matthew 5 from verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you've got to recognize that you're poor in spirit. You've got to recognize, well, actually, I can't save myself. Nothing good comes from me trying to do things for myself to save me. I am incapable of doing that. Blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. So we can be sad that we, we, we can't save ourselves, but that drives us towards God. That drives us towards his salvation. Then look at this. Blessed are the meek, for they'll inherit the earth. Meek, there's an interesting word. Now, meek means quiet. It means gentle. It means submissive. It means obedient. Now, we hear this, or we read this word meek, and we, we struggle to understand that this would have been a massive deal for the people of the day. Think about the original audience of, of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount there. They were Jews, yes? And these Jews were very prideful, very spiritually exclusive people. We have got it. We are God's chosen people. We are the ones who God loves, and we are the ones who are moving in the blessing. Nobody else gets to do that. It's just us. But these Jews, they're also living under Roman occupation. You know, they, they had their sights set on this Messiah. They had their sights set on someone who was going to save them, deliver them from this Roman occupation. And they were hanging out for this Messiah to come and restore them to their rightful position. So the Jews didn't want meekness. They wanted power. They wanted wild. They, they didn't want a meek Jesus Messiah. They, they wanted John Wick, you know. They, they wanted someone to pick up weapons and to go on a big revenge mission. They wanted someone who was handy with a gun and was going to be able to take out anybody who was in their way. What it was. They probably want Keanu Reeves, he looks a bit like Jesus at times too, doesn't he? They wanted a Messiah to bring about a, spiritual, a, a physical revolution. Jesus came to bring a spiritual one. Doesn't, we, doesn't meekness and obedience, it, it, it kind of feels a bit wussy, doesn't it? It kind of feels a bit soft and a bit wimpy and feels kind of like you're being walked over. If you're a follower of Jesus... Meekness and obedience are not options. 
Obedience isn't a suggestion. Let me talk about it in a way that will hopefully help you to unpack this and see the usefulness of it. So in the original language in the Bible, the word meek is the word praeus. Now, it has different levels of meaning. The, the, the surface level of meaning, it can mean mild or it can mean humble. But there's actually a deeper meaning to this level of word. Okay? And this word in the Greek was often used to describe, get this, animals whose wild spirit had been broken by a trainer. Okay, so why did an animal's wild spirit have to be broken by a trainer? So it could be ridden. So it could be used to pull a plow. So it could be useful. See, that's why the wild spirit of the animal had to be broken. So it could be useful. So imagine in your mind a big stallion. Or, or maybe a, a, a massive draft horse, you know, an incredible animal that can run like the wind, can, can pull heavy plows, can work hard. I don't know, that, that's not a picture of, of, meek, of, of wussiness. That's not a picture of weakness. It's strength under control. Strength under control. So... We're allowed to be strong. We're, we're allowed to be have some, some chops to us, you know. But when, our, when we are meek, we are useful to God. When we are obedient, we can be useful to God. That's when blessing flows. That's when blessing flows. And here's the third reason. And as I bring this, I'd like the band to come. The third reason... To obey God when he tells you things. Obedience brings blessing for others. I mean, for those of you who know your Bible stories, just have a quick think. Think about those examples in the Bible of radical disobedience. Adam and Eve eating the fruit. Moses, Israelites, refusing to take the promised land. King David committing adultery with Bathsheba. Think about those radical disobediences. What happened afterward? In every example, it's not just the players who suffer. It's their families. It's their neighbors. It's even the generations to come that suffer because of their disobedience. Now think about the examples of radical obedience. Noah building his ark. Abraham taking Isaac for sacrifice. Joseph taking pregnant Mary as his wife. In every example here, we see blessing isn't just unlocked for those players. Blessing is unlocked for their families. Blessing is unlocked for their community. Blessing is unlocked for the generations to come. You know, we have the opportunity today to bless our families, to bless our neighbours, to bless our towns, to, to bless the Riverland community. We've actually got the opportunity today to bless our nation. Simply by saying yes to God. Simply by saying, God, I will do what you tell me to do. I will be obedient. Would you stand with me? I don't pretend for a minute that obedience is easy. It's not. It's a daily thing. But if God's telling you to do something, if you've read in your Bible, this is the kind of person I need to be, move heaven and earth to be that person. Ask God to help. If God's spoken into your spirit and he's told you that there's a particular thing to do, you're not doing it. Why? 
by God. Because he's God. Obey God because it will bring blessing to you. Obey God because it will bring blessing to the people around you. Nearly 200 years ago, 200 years ago, the American evangelist and revivalist D.L. Moody, he was famous for, for calling thousands of people to repentance, thousands of people to renewal. He said this, the world has yet to see what God will do with a man fully consecrated to him. Can I suggest that it's actually entirely possible that there's a man, a woman, or a young person in this room, in one of the overflow rooms, or even watching the live stream right now, who could be fully consecrated to God and could be that person. Is this you this morning? Can you be that person that D.L. Moody was calling out 200 years ago? Can we pray together? Let's commit ourselves to God. Lord God, we do want this year, 2021, to be the best year ever. And Lord, we know so much of it doesn't rely on us. It, it relies on you and your goodness, you and your blessing, you and your mercy. But Lord, we want to position ourselves to receive everything that you've got for us. And Lord, having a mindset of obedience to you is part of that. The so Lord, as we stand before you now, we want to acknowledge firstly that you are God. You are the Lord. You are the one who has supreme authority over our lives. You are bigger than we can imagine, more powerful than we can imagine, greater than we can imagine, more loving than we can imagine. And who can we serve but you? We give ourselves to you again, God. And we fall on your supremacy. We we, we bow to your majesty. Lord, as we obey you, please shower your blessing upon us. But Lord, we don't want your, your, your blessing just to be for us. Shower your blessing on the people around us. We say yes to Jesus name. In Jesus name. And Lord, I also pray for those of us who don't want to do this. We're standing because we think we should, or we're standing because we think it's the right idea. Lord, change our hearts with you. Make us want to follow you. Make us want to obey you. In Jesus name. Amen. Hey, you know, while I was worshipping this morning, God gave me some words of knowledge for healing. And I want to have the opportunity after the meeting to pray for you, if that's you. Uh, so the three words of knowledge that God gave me were, one, you have problems with the elbows. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the left or the right elbow or both, but it might be arthritis or it might be some sort of inflammation. If that's you this morning, I want to pray for you. Uh, and see you healed from that. So come and talk to me. Um, I also had a word of knowledge, somebody who is having problems with their esophagus, particularly with swallowing. Uh, if that's you this morning, come and see me and I'll, I'll pray for you and let's see you healed. And the third one, um, grief. Now, grief is a good thing. Grief can be a good thing. You know, there's a time to laugh and a time to cry. But I got the sense there that God wants to heal somebody who may have been struggling with grief that is crippling. So it's actually crippling you and it's stopping you from doing some of the things you want to do. Uh, and it's been there for a very long time. So if that's you this morning, come and talk to me and I'll pray for you about that. We worship God together. Now this song, Spirit Lead Me, is all about saying yes to God, saying no to the things of ourselves. So let's worship God as we sing.
we close out the meeting. This is my worship, this is my offering, in every moment I withhold nothing, I'm learning to trust you, even when I can't see it, and even in suffering. I have to believe it Cause if you say it's wrong Then I'll say no If you say release I'm letting go If you're in it with me I'll begin And when you say to jump I'm diving in If you say be still Then I will wait If you say to trust I will obey follow my own way I'm done chasing feelings spirit it felt like a burden but once I could grasp it you took me further, further than I was asking. And to simply to see you, it's worth it all. Oh, my life is an altar. Let your fire fall. If you say it's wrong. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your way. Don't chase your feelings, spirit. Spirit. 
actually given us your spirit to lead us, to show us, to empower us, to help us. Lord God, that you would live in us is just an incredible, incredible privilege. So we want to thank you, Lord, that you've given us your spirit to lead us and to help us, to guide us and to show us, remind us and to empower us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, you're good. So good. Isn't he good? Amen. 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 Well, we'll be back to uh, close the meeting, but just before we do, just want to uh, let you know that um, if you're wanting to give your tithes and offerings this morning, you can do that through our giving stations uh, on, the, on the wall, on the way out the door there and in the next wall, or through the uh, directly to the bank account. I was just thinking about this. I've been reading the tail end of Genesis in the last few days. And you've got the people of Israel are in Egypt and uh, Joseph's there. And the, the people of Egypt have been in such a drought that they have sold everything they own to Pharaoh. They've sold their own bodies to Pharaoh. They've sold all their land to Pharaoh. And he graciously, through Joseph, gives them some, some seed and says, well, here you go, go plant some seed on the land that you now have sold to Pharaoh with these bodies that now belong to Pharaoh. And when you do that, you need to give 20% of the crop back to Pharaoh. Um, and, and so this is the world that the Israelites had been living in and then God sends them out and into the, the, you know, the wilderness to, to go to the promised land and he then gives Moses this instruction that they're to give a tithe, which is 10%, and that God's going to bless them and he, he gives them food through that time. He gives them everything they need through that time. Their clothes don't wear out. And I just think that's incredible. They were living in a land where they had to give 20% and nothing that they had was theirs. And God says, no, 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 I don't, I, I, I reject that, that, that God, the God Ra was the, you know, the Pharaoh God. Uh, I, I don't, I don't live like that God, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a much different God. It just struck me the comparison there. You know, sometimes we can go 10%, that's a lot. Those people must have been going 10%, that's not much compared with the 20 that they were giving when they were living in Egypt. Anyway, Father, we want to thank you for the privilege that it is to be yours. We want to thank you that you give us every good thing and that we have this opportunity to, to give back to you. And so we just want to thank you for that, Lord. And I ask your blessing on uh, each of us as we give our tithes and our offerings, as we sow into those uh, the, the Destiny Rescue and the other missions projects that we're involved with. Father, we thank you that you are a good God who gives good things to his good children, well, to his, his children, to us. And we just want to thank you.